Katherine Austin and welcome again to Living Karma Yoga, a show where we celebrate all that the yoga world has to offer. From the postures to music, mantra, meditation, travel, cooking, and so much more. We hope you find here many tools to help you live the life you deserve. A life where you can literally vibrate love, joy, fulfillment, and abundance in all forms. Today we're going to explore Kundalini Yoga. This is one of the types of yoga we have on our schedule at Karma, although it's not as well known in the West, like Hatha Yoga. But as all other forms of yoga, Kundalini also helps you remove stress from the body, mind, and spirit, but in a really different and fun way. Yogi Bhajan brought us this Kundalini Yoga in the 60s as a technology to get us ready for the new age we live in now. And this is a fast-paced, technology-driven age that will rule us unless we are able to keep up. Kundalini Yoga is thought of as an energy transportation system that is going to really give you the energy you need to keep up now. In a typical class, you're going to always experience breath work, a yoga set, some meditation and relaxation, and it's all traditionally paired with mantra type music to allow the students to quickly clear, heal, and elevate. For me, it's been a path of yoga that rapidly helps you feel good so you can make better choices in your life. It's really that simple. So today my students are Allison Willette and Michael Sasson, and they're joining us for a beautiful little practice just to introduce you to this technology. And a lot of people will come to Kundalini and ask us, first of all, why are we wearing white? You know, we're all in white. Well, it's just kind of the tradition of this yoga because white is a color or not a color that expands your auric field or your energy vibrational field as big as possible you know versus wearing black black wouldn't emit as much energy or vibration so white immediately makes us feel more uplifted and elevated and the teacher always wears white because that is just a tradition why do we cover our head it's kind of like a technology where we are kind of containing the energy. You know, our mothers were always right. Put a hat on your head, you're going to lose energy out the top of your head, right? You'll get cold. Well, it's the same t reason why we often cover our head in Kundalini. Although none of this is required. You don't need to cover your head. You don't need to wear white. So it's all good. Now, we'll begin our practice, and I'd love you to join us. So. Feel free, sit down, get comfortable, and try out some of this new technology, although yet old. And first, we always tune in, and we're going to tune in with what's called the Adi Mantra. And it's just kind of like a phone call to all the teachers and students of this lineage, this golden age lineage that came before us. So we're kind of calling in for their support. So we're going to begin to rub our hands together. It starts the energy flow. And then we'll bring them into our heart center. And we're just gonna do one round of the Adi Mantra. Now the mantra is Ong, it's O-N-G, Namo, Guru Dev Namo. And that means I bow to that divine teacher within, this divine wisdom, divine knowledge that already resides inside of me. So let's take an inhale and just hold the breath. And kind of hold that feeling, that knowledge, that wisdom, that light. And then exhale. And now let's take an inhale to tune in together. One round. Inhale. Om. Hold the breath. We're literally like containing that energy inside of us, allowing it to just go deep into our cellular level. And then exhale. So now I invite you to come onto your hands and knees, and we call this table pose. 
The hands are a little forward of the shoulders and the knees are about hip distance apart. And then on the inhale, you're gonna lift your head and your heart up towards the sky. And on your exhale, you're gonna round your spine chin to chest. And in Kundalini Yoga, once you understand the pose and where you're going, it's traditional to close your eyes and just kind of like dive in. After a while, you'll get to the point where you really just let go and you, you almost leave your body and you leave the room. We often call this diving into nothingness. It's very important to keep the breath powerful so you're inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. And like any other form of yoga, you go as fast or as comfortable as you would like to. Every student works at their own pace. So you can see Michael just chose a little faster flow today where Allison is feeling like this beautiful flow today and it's all good. Good, so now let's inhale and lift the head and look up. And then stretch the other way. Exhale, chin to the chest, navel to the spine. They're holding the exhale. And now inhale, stretch up one more time. And then we're gonna exhale back into child's pose. So bring your knees wide, your big toes together. And rest your forehead down. And bring your palms together in what we call like a guru pranam or a beautiful offering. And let's just take several deep breaths here, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. So where Kundalini is quite different than Hatha Yoga, the posture is the la last part of importance. Mantra is always the first part, then the breath, then the posture. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So inhale, come on up and sitting on your heels into rock pose. Now for those of you that say, hey, I don't have knees that sit like this anymore, then return to like I am, sitting in easy pose. This is great. Now you're always going to do a pranayama or some breath work in Kundalini. So we're going to demonstrate ego eradicator, which I love the name of that. It's like you should never leave home without this one. <laughs> it kind of sets you in the right frame of mind. The arms are going to go up to 60 degrees. Fingertips curl into like the knuckles. And the thumbs are really strong and drawing towards each other. The eyes are closed. And we're going to begin an even breath through the nose. Inhale and exhale. So they're going to continue pumping. You continue as well. And you can see how it's activating the navel center on their body. In Kundalini, that's where all the dormant Kundalini energy is stored. So this particular breath exercise is going to activate it and awaken it. This is really powerful in like charging you up for the day. You know how we're so concerned about plugging in our iPhone or our computer? We need to plug ourselves in first. Go ahead. And then I love how they have this beautiful V for victory in their arms. They're feeling it. Good, so let's take an inhale and hold the breath. Guide the thumbs to touch above your head. Extend the eight fingers to the sky and really project the energy out of your fingertips. Literally squeeze from your pelvic floor navel, pull it up, and then exhale, bring the arms down. Excellent. And now just sit for a moment with your eyes closed and see if you can feel maybe a little higher vibration within you. Many people will even say, whew, I feel a little woozy or dizzy or, or a natural high, which is exactly what we want. We want to feel great when we wake up every day. Okay? Instead of waking up with complaints or negativity or a victim, you know, that's become quite the norm. Let's elevate instead. All right, so let's come back to seated. This is called easy pose. Not so easy for everybody, but that's the name it gets. Now let's hold on to our shins. 
we're going to do a spinal flex. So what that looks like is the head's going to stay level and it's inhale, bring the heart through, exhale, round the spine. So now you know where you're going. Close the eyes when you feel comfortable and literally focus your eyes up between the eyebrows. It's called your third eye. We want that to open more, our intuition are all-knowing. This pose, can you tell, is totally going to unlock the lower spine, the hips, the groins. The energy is going to flow better through the body. And when our energy is flowing optimally through us, that's when we feel great. We feel happiness. We feel joy. We feel abundant, prosperous in all forms. We're connected to something so much bigger than just our little selves. Good. Keep going, maybe about 15 more seconds. Good. Now keeping the eyes closed, inhale, hold the breath. Again, add those squeezing of the pelvic floor navel to the spine. Pull that energy up, feel yourself elevating and exhale. Now let's just sit for a moment and almost like we're installing new software, we're letting it integrate. We're, we're getting an upgrade to our nervous system, to our brain. We're installing new software, literally. All right, so go ahead and bring your hands to your shoulders fingers kind of come down the front, thumbs down the back, and just do the best you can. Elbows up nice and high, plug them in, and you're going to inhale to your left, exhale to your right, and try to let your head go with you. Excellent for your digestive system. You can see it, right? You're really going to bring some energy flow back into the stomach, the intestines, all the way down. But can you see also how they look like a little washing machine for the heart? When I first got into Kundalini Yoga, I had so much release from this pose. My heart had some, you know, old wounds on it, some sadness, some disappointments, broken hearts. We all have them. This pose literally cleared it out for me. I couldn't believe how fast. Nice. Now inhale to center. Pull up, pull up, and exhale. Right. Just sit for a moment, eyes closed. Feel the shift. Now this has just been a beautiful kundalini sampler. If you want to experience more, absolutely come to the studio and attend our classes. But we always end our classes with our palms together in front of our heart center. And it's a tradition to end with the long time sun. It's a Celtic prayer. So we'll just say one round. May the long time sun shine upon you all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on and then we always end with a greeting called Sat Nam which means I am truth truth is my identity so we say Sat Nam hmm. so thank you Allison and Michael and we just wanted to spend a couple minutes talking to them about maybe their personal experiences with kundalini yoga. They've been practicing this yoga for quite a while now and Allison, would you like to just share how maybe it's affected you or changed your life? I think it has helped me become a more confident person, more loving and certainly more kind. Able to let go of trying to change other people and just seeing all the goodness in the world that surrounds us. And you've gotten so bright, like your eyes are so sparkly and really elevated. Thanks. Thank you. And Michael. So I, uh, 
I have a new diagnosis, I guess I would say. Happy. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, it, it, it's awakened my body's energy in a way that I never knew it was possible and really grounds me every day in feeling that energy and knowing that that's the way we're supposed to be. Mm. When we're in tune with that energy, we're not in our head and mm -hmm. we're feeling really good. It's, thank you. It's been phenomenal to watch both of these beautiful students grow through their practice and it does help you to really just step into your radiance, I would say biggest, and your strength and your courage and your magnificence as Yogi Bhajan says. So thanks for joining me and thank you for this beautiful segment. Stay with us because next we're going to have Kate Smith taking us through a home Ayurveda cooking class. See you soon. I'm here with Kate Smith today for another mini Ayurveda cooking lesson. She's an Ayurveda team member and our Ayurvedic chef on staff. And today we're going to learn about ghee, which is a definite Ayurvedic staple in the kitchen. Oh, so true, Kath. Ghee is like an elixir in Ayurveda. It's like the cure-all. And what ghee actually is, is somewhat like clarified butter, where all the milk and all the water is cooked out of the actual butter. Right. So we'll talk about it a little bit mm -hmm. um, as we make ghee. First you start with four, a pound, four sticks of whole organic butter. Mm -hmm. And you just want, over a medium to high heat, to bring the butter to a small, subtle boil and then turn it down right. to a simmer. So we're gonna let that happen for a little while and we're gonna watch it as it melts. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the ritual of cooking ghee. Mm. And ghee is a mindful experience. And it's an experience that brings us into the kitchen in a quiet way. So we never really leave the ghee pot. And, in its, and it's actually said that the optimal way and the optimal time to make ghee is at the new moon. We right. call it new moon ghee. Mm -hmm. And there is a story about ghee that the Sikhs and the sages gathered the monks around the new moon and called them all from their duties and their chores and their, you know, faraway renunciate caves or, you know, and um, said, come and gather and be with the sound of the cooking ghee. Yeah. Be in quiet, Lovely. be in silence so that they could be with the new moon and cultivate stillness and cultivate awareness. And I love that because it helps me to cultivate stillness and cultivate awareness. Mm -hmm. When I come into the kitchen and I do most of my cooking, I'm cooking quietly in silence. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that there aren't times where everybody's around and you know the game is on or somebody's right. listening to music. But when I'm really preparing food, I'm preparing it in silence. It's really a sacred event. It's a sadhana, right? Mm -hmm. So listen. You can hear the ghee starting to bubble. Mm -hmm. And the Sikhs and the sages said that it's like rain on the roof. It does sound like Doesn't that. It? I love that. And as the ghee cooks and the butter begins to boil and the milk fat is cooked out of it and the water evaporates, the rain actually quiet down until mm -hmm. it's like a plop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's when you know the ghee is done. And making ghee is so easy. A lot of people are afraid to do it. And you can buy it in a jar in the store, but you it's can. so different when you're putting your energy and your love to it. And I like this little ritual of being here for about 20 minutes while my ghee is making. Mm -hmm. Right, because you're watching it transform mm -hmm. from something very solid into something very liquid. And by the way, back to being solid again because the finished product is actually a solid product. Good. So you want to turn the heat down when it does start to boil, because you don't want to burn the ghee, but you want to wait until it's a very beautiful golden color. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you opened, you said it's the staple. And the reason it's the, st the staple is because there's so many medicinal qualities to ghee. Mm -hmm. The reason it's in, ele in Alexer is because it's so healing. It has many, many healing properties. It's the revered medium of bringing the nutrients of food to our body, to our tissues. Right. So it oleates our body. It right. oils our body. Very healthy. It's very, very healthy. 
And the reason it's revered in cooking, in Ayurvedic cooking, is for many, but for just a couple, is mm -hmm. because it balances body and mind. So it promotes longevity. Mm -hmm. It helps with memory. Wow. which is really cool. It has vitamin A, it has um, beta carotene. Mm -hmm. It is, um, an, I, I don't know, I think it might even be an antioxidant. I think so, yeah. I think I read that. Mm -hmm. And you can use it externally as well to oil your feet right. and to give yourself a massage. Mm -hmm. You could even use it in your nose to oil the insides of your nostrils, yep. to clean it, to cleanse it. So it really has many, many healing properties. For my digestion, ghee is a big staple because I have a slower digestion. Mm -hmm. So it really helps just make everything move so much easier in my body. At the same time, it's helping your digest digestion, but it's not firing your digestion. Correct. And that's the beauty of ghee. It seems to have so many paradoxical mm -hmm. ways of working together. Mm -hmm. It's actually cooling, but it can help to eliminate. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. it's, it's very fascinating. So here's the rain. I don't know if the cameras can pick it up and hear it. But the milk fat starts to come to the top. It sounds like monsoon season in Southern Kerala. There you go. In India. All right. So it has a very high heating point, but a very low melting point. So it'll melt fairly quickly, right. but it'll take time for it to burn. That's why it's also so wonderful for cooking. Right. And there's no hydrogenated, hydrogenated oils, no trans fatty fats, again, right. adding to longevity. And we, some chefs actually, some Ayurvedic chefs, stick their, their spoon in the ghee to release the vapor. Oh, I've mm -hmm. never heard that mm -hmm. all the years I've been cooking it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you really don't want to play or touch the ghee too much. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guilty of moving. I do too. <laughs> yeah, I think I learned that from you, right, actually. Right. We've made I was ghee. told that's okay. <laughs> oh. Well, we're modern, mm -hmm. and we're going to put our little modern spin on it. But we want it to get to be a golden brown. And like I said, it does take about 15 minutes. And in the quiet of your home, at any season, but if it works out, then it's the new moon. Mm -hmm. To make new moon ghee is really a treat. My favorite food, one of my favorite foods, I'll confess, is popcorn. Mm -hmm. But it's not so great for my digestive system because mm -hmm. I have a pretty dry system. Right. Well, I pop my popcorn in ghee. So it's a little bit more easy to digest. So you recommend that we stay by the pan. It's part of the sadhana. We do. And for those 15 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. till we see, you know, the ghee really happening. Yep. We want to wait until the ghee is clear. Mm -hmm. And actually, a little ghee guru... I think it was you, <laughs> told me that one of the tricks is being able to see all the way down yeah. into the bottom of your pan. It'll become really clear. Really, really, really clear. But you want to stay with it because it is a mindful practice and because you don't want the ghee to burn. And it could burn like right, that. Right, right. So you, you want to tend to it. It keeps you by the stove. You can't multitask, get distracted by other things. Exactly. And that's why it's lovely for it to be quiet. You don't want to be making something else while you're making ghee. Mm -hmm. It's a singular mindful practice. Mm -hmm. And it brings you back to yourself. You know, it's a reflection of purity, mm -hmm. reflection of yourself. It's kind of neat to have Don Vantri, which is the, the Hindu goddess of the, the kitchens. He came rising out of the sea with the elixir of the gods, and here we are cooking right. one of the many right. elixirs. You hear it, it's still raining, so you know that we have time for it to go. So all the milk fat is coming up to the surface and all the water is evaporating. Mm -hmm. And I could go on and on about the medicinal properties of ghee, but you know what's really cool is to know that ghee keeps for a really long time. And you don't keep it in the refrigerator. Right. You keep it on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And in India, um, they say that the longer ghee sits, the more medicinal the properties are of ghee. You could find a hundred-year-old jar of ghee in an Ayurveda practitioner's pantry, oh. even in hidden away in a cave. Wow. So that's really cool. So we Didn't you say it was the medicinal properties are really good for people that are dairy intolerant? Yeah, because mm -hmm. people who are dairy sensitive, since the milk is being cooked out of it, the sensitivity isn't as great. So. So we're almost there. Isn't we it? are it's there. It's a little bit foamier, but we're not going to let it burn. So what we're going to do, since it's a gas stove actually, mm -hmm. we are going to take it off the stove. 
because with a gas stove, the heat comes up before it comes down, and the ghee would bubble way up again before right. it came down. Right. And we're just going to let it sit for a couple of minutes as it cools, and come on over. We're going to pour it through a cheesecloth right. into a clean, sterile glass jar. And this is a lovely thing. This was once a store-bought jar of, of ghee. So this size jar of store-bought ghee will house a one pound. I know, it's such a perfect fit. It's a perfect fit. fit. And when the ghee is done, I made some last night, this is what it looks like. Mmm, beautiful. That nutty. rich, rich and golden color. Mm. So it's mm. got a really, really nutty flavor and a really nutty smell. I literally Very use my ghee every day for something. Right. right. So remember the spice box in one episode that we were talking about, the masala daba? Right. Well, those spices can be actually cooked into the ghee for medicinal purposes, mm -hmm. and it's called medicinal ghee. Right. And Ayurvedic practitioners and women in India give their children a teaspoon or a tablespoon, whatever their practitioner mm -hmm. recommends, of medicinal ghee. Mm. You know, it's cooked in turmeric, or maybe the practitioner recommended, you know, a combination of spices, right. and those go into the ghee. And that's kept on the shelf for medicinal purposes. It's really cool. Amazing. So let's get the ghee. I think okay. it's cooled down a little. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it is. And we'll just very carefully come over to our cheesecloth. And that's going to catch all those milk solids or the foam mm -hmm. that's left. Yeah. And it's always a perfect fit. I love that. It's crazy. So go buy yourself some store-bought ghee, and then you'll have a perfect jar. And you mm -hmm. just lift up the sides of the cheesecloth, like so, and you can see the beautiful golden liquid. Mm. And you're done. Beautiful. You wait till it cools completely. It's a little hot. You put your lid on. You store it in a dark place. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, it'll look just like this. Oh, it smells so good. Doesn't it? Let's make popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kate. <laughs>Thank you for joining us today and I want to thank my guests Michael Sasson and Allison Willette and Kate Smith. Thank you for sharing how to live our yoga off the mat and bring it into our lives. And if you like what you see here, please join us at www.karma-yoga.net and satnam.